Well, today is our day for the flower dissection, and I'm really excited to do this with you so that you really learn how um, the plants have sex organs as we have sexual reproduction in plants as well as asexual reproduction in plants. So starting off, I want you to know that there are two types of plants in the world. We kind of divide it into two different types, some that have cones, and here in Central Texas, we don't have very many cone, uh, pine cones or fir tree cones that I could get. So I'm showing you that these are different types of cones on a tree. Some of them are female, these are female, and these are the male cones. Sometimes you will um, see these kind for during the holidays. On the edges of them, they have lots of sticky material on them so that the pollen that is released by the male parts, uh, when they release this pollen, it blows through the air and it attracts and sticks to the sticky parts on these female cones so that they can um, fertilize the little eggs that are inside them. So this is called a gymnosperm. Gymnosperms are cone-bearing plants and they have male, male and female cones on them. The other types of plants are the flower producing plants. So these are the types of flowers that we're going to be using in our dissection today. These are Alstroemerias and you can get these at any little store um, for uh, really an inexpensive price, but they're a beautiful type of lily that we can use for our dissection. So as we dissect today, you're going to need a few things to have in this dissection. I'd like for you to have a sheet of paper that you can fold in half to make like a little booklet, but it's also going to be a little placemat that we're going to use for uh, dissecting on. So on the outside of it, go ahead and write down flower dissection by and put your name on it here. Um, we're going to be using some tools. Um, in uh, the science lab, we have a blunt probe, so it's not very sharp. So if you might find something, uh, maybe a pair of tweezers or something that has kind of a a pointed area, even a toothpick works great for this part. So if you wanna get a toothpick, that might be a good idea to substitute if you're at home and doing this virtually. A pair of little scissors might be helpful. And a if you don't have a scalpel, maybe a uh, knife, uh, a small knife. We'll use this for one cut, so just a small little knife. And then a pair of tweezers are, we call them forceps in science. So we're gonna be using those tools. Don't forget to make your little booklet and on the outside, you're gonna title it um, Flower Dissection. Bye. And then put your name, not my name. Okay. So we're gonna have it with it like this. And then we're gonna use our little booklet so that um, we are going to use open it up and lay it on the table like a placemat so that we can do our dissection on top so you're not going to see a lot of my face now you're going to be seeing me dissect and instruct the dissection so i'll be looking down at the um, flower and what we're doing on the dissection Flowers are different from cone-bearing plants because flowers have both the male and the female parts, and they have one purpose, and that is to attract pollinators. So these flowers, their whole purpose is to get the flower pollinated, get the female part pollinated by the pollen, and then these petals have no other purpose, so they begin to fade away. I often tell my uh, classes that if you want the lily flowers with these beautiful little stamens in the middle, if you want them to last longer, just take and reach and grab those little stamens and pluck them out because that way the pollination doesn't happen and the flowers will stay pretty for a longer uh, time. So we're going to look at this uh, lily flower called an alstroemeria, and we're going to take it apart. The first thing I want you to do is remember that this placemat is also going to serve for a place that we're going to be taping down everything. So you should have it folded in half, 
and then you're going to be um, put it, we're going to tape the things on the right hand side so just um, put things down on the paper and collect it as we're doing this so the first thing we want to do is take off the leaves so that we have a leaf or two um, for our collection and then we're going to look at this flower and we see that it has six petals and they look differently one two three four five six petals so we're going to start on the outside and start pulling the petals off just gently just snap and they break off very easily moving around so these petals have a purpose and that is to attract uh, pollinators maybe hummingbirds or maybe um, butterflies or bees and when we take them off as you notice some of these look different we're going to talk about those in just a second so these little lines right here, these are called guidelines, and they are uh, lines that are actually uh, giving off a sp special light that attracts the pollinators. And basically, if you look at them, they're pointing, they're guiding the bug or the, the hummingbird to the center. They're kind of pointing to the center. So I'm going to show you the difference in what a stamen is, which is the, the male part. Like this one right here is a male part. It's a stamen. It has a filament and it has an anther on the top. Anther is spelled A-N-T-H-E-R and it has a filament, F-I-L-A-M-M-M-E-N-T, filament. And together, those make up what we call the stamen. And you can remember that because it has, this is the male part because it has men in it. So you have the anther and the filament that makes up the stamen. There should be six of those on here and you might end up with a flower that doesn't have an anther on the top of it. So there's another one. I'm gently trying to find the ones that do have the anther on the top because I know those are the male parts. Notice that this one looks differently and that's because it hasn't released the pollen from it. That one is still um, not released, matured enough to release it. So as I'm taking them apart, I notice that there's this one that looks different from the rest of them. It may be a little shorter, but it doesn't have anything on the tip of it. And it kind of looks like it has a little tip on it that has a little split in it, kind of like that. And that is the female part right here. That part right there is called the pistol. And we're gonna leave that one on. So continue to take off the anthers and the filaments, which are the stamens. So all together, I have six of them right there. And these are my male parts right there. Okay, I'm left with this one piece right here. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on that and show you the tip of it. Um, so it looks a little different. So if it has not been um, pollinated, the tip of it's gonna look closed up like this drawing, kind of like closed. But if yours has been pollinated, then it's going to be open and it will look like that because it's accepted the pollen. The pollen has landed on here and it has traveled down this long tube that's called the style. And it's going down to the ovary where in the middle here is some eggs in the middle. So this little bit of pollen, I wanna focus on this part right here, which is the female part. And this is called the pistol, not like a gun. It's P-I-S-T-I-L. This is the female part. Right here on the tip, it's kind of sticky on the tip of it, and that is called the stigma. The stigma is what is going to uh, cause the, the pollen to stick to it, and then that pollen forms a long tube that goes right down the center of this uh, filament. This one is called 
the style and it gets all the way down in here until it gets down into this portion called the ovary. So we have the stigma, the style, and the ovary. And that all makes the pistil, which is the female part of the flower. Okay, so now we'll take off the pistil and that's the female part. Just snap it off like that and you can put it on the place. All right, now we've got this last part, which is the ovary. And so that's where we're gonna cut into it with our scalpel or our little knife and see what the inside looks like. Okay, it's very important that you follow my instructions on this because you are gonna be using either a knife or a scalpel blade and you wanna make sure you're cutting it in the right direction. So if you've got your stem, let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see how I've got my stem. I'm laying mine sideways because it's easier for me to hold. You want to be cutting in line with the stem. You're gonna cut the length wise. You don't wanna cut across. This is not right. This is not right. You wanna cut the length of the stem. So with the, the direction of the stem. And when you do that, you're gonna be cutting open the ovary. You're splitting it in the middle and you're inside it. We're gonna see some things inside. So I'm gonna zoom in and see if we can see those. Okay, inside there are some tiny little bead looking things and those are actually the eggs. They're waiting on fertilization from the pollen. So if you take your probe or your toothpick, you can just take and, whoops, and you can scrape inside here and get a few of those little eggs out. They'll usually pop out like little uh, beads or little, and they'll stick onto the, the probe or onto the uh, toothpick there. And so that's a couple of them right there. Those are the eggs that are inside the ovary. Now mine had not been fertilized yet, uh, pollinated, because I, mine was closed up on the top. The, the stigma was closed up. So when I was scraping here, I can see these little bead-like things. Um, what I like to do is go under a microscope and look at them, but if you want to uh, zoom in and take a great picture of them with the um, your zoom on your phone camera, that might work too. So. Um, these little beads are the eggs. What do those eggs do when they're um, fertilized? They actually become the seeds. So on a couple of days ago, we dissected a bean seed. Now, of course, we're doing a flower. This would become a flower seed, but it's the same process. Bean plants have flowers. Those flowers have ovaries and they have um, the stamen in them, and then they get pollinated, the eggs inside the flower gets pollinated, and then it becomes lima bean seeds, or uh, tomato seeds, or maybe okra seeds, or flower seeds of any sort. So these happen to be Alstroemeria eggs, which when they're fertilized, they become the seed. Now here's a funny part. This ovary that you just cut open, after it's fertilized, in a, a, a vegetable plant or in a, in a plant, this ovary swells up really big and surrounds it and makes a really big um, part that's called an ovary that is called a fruit. Now think about this. You've eaten apples and oranges and maybe a lemon or a pear, cucumbers, tomatoes. You've eaten an ovary. So every time that you eat something that has seeds in the middle of it, you're actually eating an ovary. So when you eat a mango or a pear, you're eating an ovary. And so that's just a funny thing to remember is that its purpose, that, that fruit's purpose is so that animals or humans would come and eat it. It makes it attractive, it's sweet, it's tasty, so that they come and eat it and then they distribute those seeds when they go 
to the bathroom, they spread the seeds in other locations. So that's the purpose of the fruit swelling up, the ovary swells up and it makes that um, sweet, attractive fruit so that animals will eat it and then carry that seed to another place. So now we're gonna make our little um, display here with all of our parts. And if you tap your um, anthers a little bit, you might see that some pollen actually falls out on them. And I can see a little bit of tiny little pollen right here that's, but you might not be able to see it with um, how far away it is. But you might see some little tiny um, spots that start forming on your, uh, paper. Well, what we want to do now is take some tape and tape everything in place, but not don't get too crazy with your tape because I don't want you to lose your actual um, beauty of all the parts. So if I put some tape over it, I can preserve my anthers and my filaments there, and I've got a little bit of pollen under it. I'm going to tape the petals down. I kind of make them in a pretty display, kind of like that. And then put a little tape on them. Maybe one more piece of tape at the top. But just try to lay them flat. Okay. And I definitely want to make sure I save my eggs that were in on the probe. So I'm going to go over here and take my tape and gather up the little eggs that were there. Okay, and then I'm gonna put them right here so I can label those. And then I have the ovary. I'm gonna put those down. And so I'll put those and tape those in place, the ovary. So I can remember and label those. Maybe I'll put those up by the eggs up here since that's where the, the eggs came from. Tape those in place. And then I had my female part right here, <clears throat> which was the stigma. So I want to tape that one in place. And then maybe a leaf, or I'll put that right there. Okay. Now, right now, this is going to be a little bit uh, bumpy whenever we close it up, but it's really beautiful after a couple of days of it being pressed. Uh, it turns out to be a really pretty display afterwards. So you can arrange yours how you would like it and then I want you to make sure you label everything the leaf make sure you have your anthers that have the pollen the filament that supports the anthers these are the male parts then I have my eggs that were inside the ovary what does the ovary turn into fruit so a cucumber is actually a fruit. It's kind of weird to think about that. Any kind of um, what we usually say vegetable that has seeds on the inside of it is actually a fruit. A vegetable would actually be like asparagus or broccoli or cauliflower. Those are actually vegetables. And then we have our petals. P-E-T-A-L-S. Okay, and notice how I spell um, pistol down here. Pistol is not spelled like a gun. It's P-I-S-T-I-L, and these are the female parts. So the pollen comes from the anthers, and it lands on the top of the... A stigma right here that's sticky and it travels down through the style and it goes into the ovary and fertilizes the eggs 
which become seeds. The ovary then gets very large and usually changes um, flavors, so it's made, it becomes sweeter. It has more glucose stored in it, and that is what attracts our um, animals and for us to actually eat them. The whole purpose of the petals was simply to attract what? Pollinators, and these are guidelines. So if you want to put a little note that these are the guidelines, And that way you can remember that that has to draw, uh, draw the pollinators to come to the center.